Today, we're going to recycle construction waste and create aggregates. I'm Daniel, and this is Asheville. Asheville, a group of companies in the construction and rail sector based in London close to Heathrow Airport. We operate from a rail hub where we import primary aggregates like sand, gravel and type 1 and export waste material which is non-hazardous. We also accept material by road. Some which cannot be processed is loaded onto the train and others which can, like concrete, hardcore, paving and bricks, are stockpiled and then processed to create a range of recycled aggregates. We do this for two reasons. One, because doing this reduces the speed at which we fill our planet's limited void space. Two, because the end product is a cost-effective alternative to primary aggregates. Recycling is defined as the process of converting a waste material into a new material or object rather than disposing of it. basic principle behind recycling material is to create a circular economy. A site is demolished, the material is brought to our site, we process to create a product, this product is then taken back to construction sites and used as fill material. Are different ways to process material like screening which is the process of separating material particles into different sizes now this is done with a screener like you can see here which basically works like a giant sieve material is loaded vibrated and passes over teeth and different size mesh the mesh is stacked in levels with the largest openings being at the top keeping the large particles at that level and causing finer material to fall through to the mesh on lower levels to continue to be sorted. Once separated, each size material is transported to a separate stockpile by a conveyor belt for processing. Then there's washing, which is the process of cleaning material of impurities such as dust, mud, and other contaminants by blasting it with water through powerful jets. And then we have crushing, which we're looking at in detail today, which is the process of breaking material down into smaller sizes to meet a specific specification. The crusher we're using today is a PowerScreen R400X. It has a V-shaped chamber with adjustable plates either side called jaws. You configure the distance between the jaws based on the size of the material you'd like to create. One jaw is fixed and the other continues to move in a back and forth motion. This creates the crush in action by forcing the material downwards against the fixed jaw with compressive strength of up to 390 kilonewtons, outputting up to 400 tons per hour. This is all powered by a 9-litre, 5-cylinder, 275-brake horsepower Scania engine. There are many recycling facility setups which use all three processes mentioned. Ours is a simple but effective setup where we only crush. We analyse the composition and request testing of all material we accept to ensure it is suitable and pre-processed before any crushing takes place. We do this seasonally and currently only produce one end product. 
Here we have a load of concrete which came in from a job round the corner where they were breaking out a slab. They were in much bigger pieces. We used the breaker and we broke them down into much more manageable pieces that we can feed through the crusher. Now before we've done that, we've cut away as much of the rebar as we can, but 100% within a lot of these pieces, there'll be more reinforcement. However, with the manageable sizes they're in now, when we drop them into the crusher, when they're broken apart, there's a magnet within the crusher which will pull out this metal and the conveyor will take it over into our 20 yard scrap bin. Now here we have a pile of sandy granular gear with loads of little stones in it. Now while it doesn't look perfect, there is loads of goodness in this material. And when this is run through the crusher together with a concrete, like we get a fantastic consistency and mix. Now in the winter months, uh, this wouldn't be great as the small elements of soil in it, they can kind of clump together when they get wet. But as you can see by what we've got here now, all the stony gear does not stick together. So the majority of the consistency here must be sandy. The trick here is to continually observe the material as it's being processed. There is no exact calculation or textbook step-by-step -step instructions to follow. You need to constantly analyze the composition of the available material, estimate and feed through quantities to achieve your desired end result. It's sort of like continuing to add seasoning when cooking until you're happy with the taste. Up on the viewing platform, we can see the material coming through. You're just really here to see if you spot any problems as the material falls into the part of the crusher where it's all broken down. The material comes off the belt we give it a bit of a visual inspection and then once it's stockpiled we have a closer look and we can pick out any little bits and pieces this is probably a membrane when a slab was broken out and this is probably this is probably another membrane where some sand was taken out of another job now you do see some of this when you're up on the viewing platform but being up on the viewing platform it's more about looking to see if you see any problems there's like emergency stops everywhere if you see something dropping into the crusher which shouldn't be We always crush a lot faster when we have good weather. And when we're flat out, we probably exchange this 20 yard scrap bin every two days. And generally, they weigh between four and six tons. When the material stockpiled, a lot of the larger material tends to fall off the top and gather along the bottom here. So when we're loading lorries, every now and then, we turn the material over to ensure that we have consistency running through it. Because when you give it to a site, they don't like it to be too stony, but at the same time, they don't want a lorry load full of fines. If you can get just the right mix for them, it compacts well. We're creating a recycled 6F5, which is typically 120 mil down to dust, but we aim for 75 mil down to dust. The sizing of material is called grade in. This is the distribution of particle sizes throughout. This is important as it affects the durability, compaction and strength. As the material is created with what was previously classified as waste, it is inevitable there will be an element of contaminants and percentages of each type of ingredient will vary. There is a tolerance of 1% for unavoidable debris like timber and plastic. And there is no exact allowance for brick. However, 
We always ensure the percentage of brick is relatively low over an entire stockpile as excessive amounts of brick can adversely affect the material performance. As when crushed, brick can react differently to concrete and keep an angular shape. This means it may not compact well and leave voids which have the potential to affect the surfaces above. Long term, brick can also disintegrate over time through heavy traffic and moisture. As bricks are porous, they can absorb moisture, leading to freezing and thawing cycles that cause them to crumble. Again, causing shifts and sinking in sub-base which may cause damage to structures above. One material we try to completely avoid are breeze blocks, as these are made with a mix of materials, some of which could be harmful. We do not know the exact composition of breeze blocks, so it's hard to determine precisely how it will react, and this could compromise the strength and durability of the end product. There are a number of recycled aggregate products, all with different specifications. To name a few, recycled gravel for drainage, recycled sand for pipe bedding, and type one crushed concrete, 6F2 and 6F5 for sub-bases. 6F5 and 6F2 are basically the same material, but the definition of 6F2 is that you are actually creating the material and using it in the exact place where you created it. For instance, if you demolish a building and then crush the material on site and then use it for a piling mat and it never leaves site. But 6F5 basically means that it was created elsewhere and then imported to site. It's really important that you have certification for your recycled material. More than likely, whichever site the material is going to, there's going to be an engineer who's going to ask for this to prove that you did put in the ground material which met the specification. So we have a third party which comes in every three to four weeks and takes a rubble sack of material from various random locations in the stockpile and then takes it back to their laboratory for testing. A site is demolished. The material is brought to our site. We process to create a product. This product is taken back to construction sites Thank you for watching all the way from Mount 6F5. Let us know what you think of the video and what recycled aggregates you'd like to see us create next.